scriptures talk about a blessedness that happens to a man whose delight is in the law of God. So as someone says, it says, but his delight is in the law of God. And doth he meditate day and night. He says that that man is like a tree planted by the rivers of water, whose leaves do not wither, when he bears fruit in every season. As you are about listening to this message, we believe that your life is going to be like that man planted by the rivers of water. Your leaves are forever going to bear. And we know that your, your season will not pass by. You will forever shine and you will forever bear fruit. We have a lot of content to share with you. So we would entreat you to subscribe to this channel as well as like us. Hit that notification bell to receive more updates from us because we know that whatever content here is going to set you on calls at every time. It's going to make you attain whatever stature that Christ wants you to attain. Thank you. It takes more than desire to reign and maximize your Christian experience. It takes more than a sincere and a well-intentioned heart. Hallelujah. He says, but the people that sat in darkness have seen a great light. Isaiah chapter 60 and verse 1 says, Arise, shine, for your light is come, and the glory of the Lord is risen upon you. I always like to quote this from Amplified. It says, Arise from the depression and the prostration that circumstances have kept you. He says, Rise to a new light. Hallelujah. So it takes more than desire. It is the entrance of that light that empowers you by the Spirit. The Word of God is the principal channel for the communication of that light. And in John 1, 5, the Bible says, The light shineth in darkness, and the darkness comprehended it not. In the name of Jesus, I pray that beginning from tonight and all through this conference, let it be a feast of light for you. I'm praying for you that whatever level of darkness that has authorized pain and circles of tragedy, bringing shame and pain to your Christian experience and making it look as though the world were a lie, the requisite level of light that will elevate you to that level of prophecy, receive it in the name of Jesus Christ. Someone say light. One more time say light. When you drive in the night, the color of your car does not matter. When you drive in the night, the size of your car does not matter. When you drive in the night, in fact, the type of your car may not matter. About the most important component as far as driving effectively in the night is concerned is the quality of the light. You can be driving a Rolls Royce, you can be driving a Bentley, provided there is no light, you are in trouble the name of the car will not automatically cover for the absence of light hallelujah you can have a very very ugly looking car for sake of description the parts barely getting by but by any means if it has light in the night it will have dominion even above a brand new car that has a faulty light let me prophesy to someone again in the name of Jesus may this conference unravel the mystery behind the darkness in your life and empower you with the keys that will grant you access to true dominion in the name of Jesus Christ listen now the Bible says that was the true light that means there are false lights they carry a semblance of liberty false light talks of a body of knowledge that may make you feel comfortable either because it is spiritual or because it is pleasant to your ears or because it is sociologically acceptable but it does not have any potency in the spirit to bring liberty that was the true light there are false lights that was the true light so I believe that this conference is also an opportunity for us to edit our spiritual understanding as far as the results we desire is concerned. What you know 
may not be what is needed to be known just because it is what you know does not mean that is what is required imagine that a student is writing an exam just because your answer is among the options does not mean it is the right answer are we together yeah so if it's a math um example and you write you 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 got four as your answer and you check the options and find option a four you will think a and believe because it was your answer it does not mean it's the right answer is the examiner that will now tell you no even though you got this your answer was there but it is not the answer you see the door you are trying to look for has a specific key the one you have may be a key but not the key to that door a house has many keys are we together now you may have the key to the living room and that key may not open the kitchen door if you want to relax in the living room happy for you but if you want to eat something in the kitchen you have a key but not the key that will open you many of you have keys but among the keys you have the key that is needed for this season it may not yet be in your hands i pray for you again in the name of jesus may god who is the helper of men deliver that key to your hand let the weight of your glory cover us let the life of your river flow let the truth of your kingdom reign in us let the weight of your glory let the weight of your glow in Jesus name Amen and Amen so we're looking at the subject the mandate first Peter chapter 2 and verse 9 please let's look at a few scriptures first Peter 2 and verse 9 The Bible says, but you are a chosen generation. Please say amen. amen. It calls us a royal priesthood and holy nation, a peculiar people. It says we have been mandated to show forth the praises of him who had called us out of darkness into his marvelous light. So Apostle Peter is teaching us here that we are a generation that was chosen, a holy nation, and that we have been given a mandate to show the praises of him that called us out of darkness into light second scripture please matthew chapter 6 and verse 9 matthew chapter 6 and verse 9 jesus was teaching us on the subject of prayer and he said after this manner pray ye our father which art in heaven hallowed be your name verse 10 he says thy kingdom come thy kingdom come he's teaching the disciples how to pray and he says in your prayer your desire should be that the kingdom comes and then he says thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven let's look at two more scriptures daniel 7 and verse 27 i'd like us to read this one together when we have it projected very quickly daniel 7 27 7 27 ready one to read and the kingdom and dominion and the greatness of the kingdom under the whole heaven shall be given to the people of the saints of the most high whose kingdom is an everlasting kingdom and all dominions shall serve and obey him hallelujah now dominion is a concept 
that if dealt with in isolation to the bigger picture of kingdom come may not effectively bless and edify those who are learning that subject dominion as powerful as it is is not supposed to be discussed in isolation are we together now dominion only finds its relevance when it is connected to a purpose that is higher than it dominion as powerful as it is is not the end itself as you will be learning dominion is a means is a tool that helps to serve a bigger purpose so in discussing the subject of dominion we must be careful up front so that we do not narrow our understanding just to the concept of authority alone authority and dominion that is not connected to a higher and a bigger a superior kingdom purpose will end up um, even destroying the person who has that understanding hallelujah the Bible is very clear as to the fact that God is a God of purpose that everything he does there is a purpose to it under the sun it was the preacher in Ecclesiastes chapter 3 who said there is a purpose to everything even under the sun so God is a God of purpose he does not do anything anything at all just for the sake of it whatever God does it is because it is connected to a larger and a greater purpose in Genesis chapter 1 from verse 26 where we get the whole idea of the creation of man down to 28 the Bible says and God said let us make man right it says in our own image and after our likeness two very important words the image of God is a spiritual quality it is what makes God God you cannot see the image of God physically are we together now the image of God is that spiritual quality and then he says our likeness the word likeness means to function like us two hands stand on two feet one head so God made man in his image and he made man in his likeness and he says let them the man Adam now have dominion over the fish of the sea he was not just talking of animals he was talking of realms and spheres are we together let them have dominion over the sea have dominion over the air have dominion over land and everything that creepeth upon it and so we see very clearly that it was at the back of the heart of god that man would reign over this side and this dimension of his kingdom but again i will tell you the purpose was not just to reign just for that sake everything in the kingdom is designed to reflect and to reveal the glory of god please write that down everything in the kingdom was designed to reflect and reveal the glory of god everything everything in the kingdom was designed to reveal and to reflect the glory of god that means anything created by god that stops reflecting his glory and stops revealing his glory is dead even if it is alive did you get that now everything in the kingdom this is a rule of thumb in studying the subject of authority and dominion and the kingdom you need to understand that everything in the kingdom was built and designed by God to reflect his glory and then to reveal his glory the plants man the entire creation reveals his glory if at any point in your life and your Christian experience your life stops being a revelation of the glory of God it means something is wrong are we together now I wish I had the time I would have shown you in Matthew chapter 6 remember Matthew chapter 5 Jesus began to teach uh, in what we call theologically the Beatitudes and then when we start from verse 13 he's teaching the people now he says you are the salt of the earth are we together 
that if the salt has lost its saltiness wherewith shall it be salted again it is for no good are you seeing now the salt is there because of something it is doing if the salt is still there as a substance but loses that saltiness he said it is good for nothing except to be trodden under foot of men then he says you are the light of the world a city that is set on a hill that cannot be hidden he says neither do men light a lamp and put it under a bushel but that they put it on top of a lampstand and it gives light to everyone who is in the room verse 16 now says let your light the word let there is permit allow by all means allow your light to so shine before not before angels let your light so shine before men that they may see your good deeds and and so it does not stop at seeing your good deeds it does not stop at your light shining it says that they may see your good deeds and that means if they see your good deeds and they've not started glorifying God your good deeds are not good enough your good deeds must get to a point where it compels them to glorify your father who is in heaven are we together John chapter 15 and verse 8 Jesus again was teaching and here's what he said he said um, hearing is my father glorified that ye bear much fruit say much fruit one more time please say much fruit hearing that means this is how my father is glorified when you bear much fruit so shall you be my disciples same john 15 when you go to verse 16 it says you have not chosen me but i have chosen you and ordained you the word ordained means to legitimize your operation i have ordained you to go and bear fruits I'm showing you this scripture to buttress on this foundation that every man and everything created by God is supposed to reflect his glory and reveal his glory so that you know what to allow in your life and what to disallow does sickness reveal his glory does failure reveal his glory so anything in your life that does not sustain the power to reflect or reveal the glory of God becomes your assignment to get it out of your life are we together you verify the continuity of conditions or things in your life by their ability to reveal the glory of God so if God gives me 10 naira and that 10 naira can reveal the glory of God it means it is not unscriptural if I ask for more of it because I have found a space for the glory of God to be revealed through it are we together yes if having a child as a married woman gives an opportunity for the glory of God to be revealed it then means it is not unscriptural to pray that you take in listen everything in your life that fails to reveal the glory of God is a burden to you and a burden to the kingdom and you must stand in partnership with the Holy Spirit to get it out of your life for instance failure for instance mediocrity for instance ignorance for instance demonic oppression this it does not matter whether it carries a semblance of good we only test it against its ability to reveal the glory of God or otherwise if it cannot reveal the glory of God it has no ministry in your life let me repeat it again if it cannot reveal the glory of God it has no ministry in your life the prosperity that cannot reveal the glory of God has no ministry in your life the increase that has no ministry to glorify the I mean uh, has an assignment to reveal the glory of God has no ministry it's not whether it is good or bad you do not test things using the indices of good or bad you test the presence or the absence of things in your life or allow for their continuity not because they are good or bad there are many good things that cannot reveal the glory of God even if it is good and it does not pass the test of revealing the glory of God you should get it out of your life 
because many people have been deceived and trapped by satan around good things so their lives are surrounded by and with good things but there is no revelation of the glory of god there is someone learning already i needed to place this as a foundation that god created everything to reflect and to reveal his glory to reflect and to reveal his glory to reflect and to reveal his glory including you that means everything god gives you and everything you pray for is only answered with respect to the degree to which it will reveal the glory of god if you say lord increase me he will not answer you just because you asked there is a system of vetting your desires using the reference of the revelation of the glory of god that is what guarantees answers because you see you would be learning that the power of god is only mandated to function within the jurisdiction of the will of god the power of god is not given the assignment to function arbitrarily for the power of god to be activated it must ensure that what it will be activated upon is within the jurisdiction of the will of God praise the name of the Lord so the Bible says God created man and decorated that man with such such glory and honor you find that expression in Psalm 8 the psalmist was contemplating the goodness of God he says when I consider this and that from verse 5 he says what is man that thou art mindful of nor the son of man that thou visitest him verse 5 says thou has made him a little lower than the word there is elohim you have made him a little lower than god you have crowned him with glory and honor you have set him above the works of your hands and paul reiterating this scripture in hebrews chapter 2 he said in doing so you left nothing that was not under his feet that was how meticulous God went as far as the dominion of the saints is concerned so it is the will of God for every believer in Christ to walk in dominion it is the will of God for every believer in Christ to walk in dominion provided that dominion becomes a tool for the revelation of Jesus Dominion, like every other thing, is useless, like salt, would lose its savor if it does not translate to the revelation of God. And now for us, the believers, the revelation of Jesus Christ. Why? Because Jesus Christ has come as the embodiment of God. Is that true? The Bible says he's the express image of the invisible God. So let's discuss a few things and then we'll have some time to pray believers according to scripture let me just go straight to the point according to scripture the bible reveals that believers have a twofold mandate please write it down all believers irrespective of what you do irrespective of where you come from irrespective of your your pedigree your you know qualification and status all believers have a twofold mandate as far as the kingdom life is concerned and let me run through them very quickly number one the first mandate that every believer has is to establish the lordship of jesus christ in the hearts of men the first mandate that every believer in Christ has is to establish the Lordship of the Christ in the hearts of men this has nothing to do with being a preacher this has nothing to do with being a man or a woman of God it has nothing to do with evangelism it is a mandate upon all men are we together the first mandate given to all men in the kingdom in order of priority is to establish the lordship of the christ in the hearts of men 
hallelujah this entire project is captured in what we call the gospel of salvation please write the gospel of salvation theologically speaking there are seven dimensions of the gospel but primarily the one that is responsible for saving men is called the gospel of salvation the gospel of salvation is a revelation of the father's love please listen carefully a revelation of the father's love revealed in and through the substitutionary sacrifice of jesus christ man and creation being the object the object of that love are we together that when we believe in jesus we receive the life of god this is the gospel of salvation a revelation of the father's love expressed in and through the substitutionary sacrifice of jesus man and then the entire creation being the object of that love hallelujah and the bible says by believing that message by believing that report you become a bona fide recipient of the life of god we call it so way it is more than eternal life in truth everybody has eternal life because eternal life means life without end nobody ceases to live the life he gave us is a quality of life not just the longevity of life are we together what jesus gave us is more than eternal life it is the very very life of god that he gave us and apostle john was mentoring the church and he said this is the record that god had given us eternal life he said but this life was so structured that until you encounter the son so please believers listen i'm just trying to summarize because of time the first dimension of the mandate given to every believer for your christian experience to be purposeful for you to really understand the value of dominion you have to understand this first dimension that it is the desire of god that all men be saved are we together now and so your pursuit for dominion and every other thing in between is useless until you understand this twofold mandate number one the establishment of the lordship of christ in the hearts of men so god is first concerned about the hearts of men before systems and structures please you need to understand this in order of spiritual priority the hearts of men carry more value than systems and structures if you focus on developing the sociology you focus on developing physical structures and you allow the hearts of men to be depraved you are not um, prioritizing the program of God the hearts of men the hearts of men let's look at a few scriptures if God is blessing you say amen the hearts of men Romans chapter 1 and verse 16. Let me run through a few scriptures. Romans 1 16, please. Romans 1 16. Apostle Paul again is teaching the church in Rome and he says, For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. He calls it the power of God unto salvation for everyone. Please say everyone. One more time, say everyone everyone includes europe everyone includes america everyone includes africa lagos every village i am not ashamed of the gospel of christ he says for it is not it has it is the power of god unto salvation to everyone that believes to everyone that believes the gospel is the power of God to everyone that believes in Mark chapter 16 and verse 15 Mark 16 15 please Mark 16 15 Jesus Christ according to Mark's synoptic account said unto them go ye into all the world he says preach the gospel to every creature it's amazing he did not say preach the gospel to men alone he says preach the gospel to every creature that means there is a way to evangelize to nature there is a way to evangelize to the ecosystem 
evangelism is not limited to speaking to men you can command salvation over territories jesus gave us a mandate he says preach the gospel to every creature third scripture romans chapter 10 please beginning from verse 8 now i like this one romans 10 and verse 8 it says but what saith it the word is nigh thee even in your mouth and your heart that is the word of faith which we preach we're reading to 15 very quickly verse 9 verse 8 down to 15 so we'll go to verse 9 now no don't jump to 15 just 8 9 10 11 12 that's what i meant that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the lord jesus now this is the spiritual protocol if you confess with your mouth the lord jesus and you believe in your heart that god raised him from the dead he says thou shalt be saved verse 10 for with the heart man believes unto righteousness are we together it says and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation now pay attention from verse 11 for the scripture says whosoever believeth on him shall not be ashamed now verse 12 there is no difference between the jew and the greek the same lord is rich unto all that call upon him 13 for whosoever shall call upon the name of the lord shall be saved 14 now it says how then shall they call upon him in whom they have not believed so the major problem is that they have not believed and how shall they believe in him of whom they have not heard it takes hearing to believe and how shall they hear without a preacher so the preacher provides the hearing of faith and the hearing of faith gives room for believing and that when you believe then the life of God is administered to you and how shall they preach except they be sent as it is written how beautiful are the feet of them that preach the gospel of peace and bring glad tidings of good things can I tell you sincerely the reason I submit to you that the reason why our idea of evangelism as much as we have programs and conferences soul winning is for many people an epileptic christian experience that just comes when opportunities provide there are many reasons among them is because we have not been living testaments of that message and that life ourselves because the way god structured impact is that when anything blesses you you automatically lose the ability to keep quiet there were times that jesus blessed people and told them to keep quiet they were too grateful to keep quiet so your silence and your inertia as far as reaching out is more than a demonic issue it is because we are so used to a failed christian experience are we together that our christian experience has become a plethora a, a repetition of failure to a point that we've just camped around the religiosity but we love people too much to bring them into this our whatever it is that does not work so we would rather talk to them about something else but not jesus but i'm praying for you in the name of jesus that your christian experience will be so rich that everything about your experience your life your testimonies will be compelling and it will bring men to jesus on a daily basis in the name of jesus christ the bible talks about the madman in gadara this was a man who was mad locked up by demon spirits in caves when he had an encounter with jesus ten cities ten cities he went to the Decapolis and announced and published the good things. The same thing happened to the woman at the well. She was not asked. Jesus did not say, go and tell the people. The Bible says she left. Her priorities changed immediately. She left whatever it is there and she ran. This was the same woman who was probably ashamed and afraid because of her state. Being a harlot. 
she said i don't care what you think about me i have been so transformed i cannot keep quiet come see a man i don't know his name but i can tell you what he did come see a man that told me everything that i have done the first mandate of every believer is not to build a house the first mandate is not to have children the first mandate is not even to be a preacher the first mandate is not to be a businessman please listen carefully believers need a new superior spiritual reorientation to understand the priorities of God you see let me tell you the reason why it looks like God has so lavishly invested upon others and has seemed to leave others it's not because there are any prejudices or biases with god it is because others have plunged more accurately into the heart of his program hallelujah yes. in order of priority establishing the lordship of christ in the hearts of men whoever participates actively in making that happen i can tell you that person number one is at the epicenter of the will of god you know we live in a world today where everyone is asking what am i here for i mean what is my purpose there is a general corporate purpose for everyone before we go into all of the the geography of our witness no matter what it is that you know or do not know about your life you are not truly working in kingdom purpose if your life is not helping to establish the lordship of christ in the hearts of men are we together most of those we read of in the bible and in history who were lavishly empowered given so much access to the anointing of the spirit every single one of them it was because the theme the anthem of their entire life was to see jesus revealed in the hearts of people and so to empower them to be effective god did not spare in giving them access to the anointing when your heart and your desire is not to see men saved you you can give any kind of excuse you can say well i'm not really into this ministry thing for me i'm just there's, there's something about me and money we're coming to you but let me tell you you are already in error it does not matter what you are called to do the mandate to see the lordship of christ established in the hearts of men is not a mandate for evangelists it's not a mandate for preachers it's not a mandate for those who choose to go into ministry it is his desire that all men be saved I was doing a little statistics with my people back home and now you know that there are about 8 billion people on earth statistic tells us as at of November and we only have about 2.6 billion professing Christians not serious Christians not Christians that have been verified 2.6 billion please help me subtract 2.6 billion from 8 billion and yet we say jesus is coming soon and we call him king of kings and lord of lords and we say he's coming as a victorious one emmanuel god is we he does he shall reign he shall reign you know that song? Can I tell you? If all we have done, respectfully speaking, our crusades, our conferences, our internet evangelism has only succeeded to bring about 2.5 billion people, there has to be a strategy that is not human to cover this gap within the time we have because by the strength of the flesh based on these statistics there is trouble you go to europe respectfully speaking go to the west and see the unfortunate plunge in the christian faith are we together now 
I mean, it is, it is, it is going down, nose diving in a disturbing way. And if we do not arise, there will be a generation that will rise and corporately reject Jesus. Not as individuals, as a generation. They will choose that we have examined the options and we have chosen that Jesus is no longer relevant in our generation. The mandate to establish the Lordship of Christ. Why am I telling you this? Because someone has been praying for spiritual power. Someone has been praying for wealth. Someone has been praying, God give me a child. And God says, all these things you are asking is within my power to give you. But I have not found any connection to my program in your desire. So your desire remains an interruption until I can find how your prayer request connects to my program. Let me give you a secret to securing the hand of God. Let your request be limited to the will of God and the program of God. And you have found the way of securing God's support eternally believe me believe me believe me Lord it is my desire to see souls saved it is my desire to see nations change it's my desire to see your light fall upon continents and this will require billions and you will see God shift systems and structures and give you money that if they ask you you say honestly I'll be lying if I can explain it this one was not end it was a trust I prayed and I told God that he should I should be you you, you are explaining the basis for this level of blessing let me tell you the truth many believers are not kingdom in their approach they are church in their approach they are religious in their approach but the truth about it is that behind our desires respectfully speaking even our praying and fasting if vetted from the lens of the will of God many of us are just doing our things using God so God is a tool to achieve a bigger picture that bigger picture being you so if you are told fasting can help you if you are told giving can help you make more money you now say God take it this is my bribe as per the discussion and God says this is not how I work but that God will find someone in this church tonight who says Lord I may not be able to do everything but here is my life that as far as adding to the number of them who call upon your name is concerned I am here and I am available you would have prayed a prayer that heaven will come out there I don't know everything about God I am a student in the knowledge of God but I can tell you one thing you secure the hand the heart and the trust of God when your heart become stayed not on church not on preaching not on business there is a place for those it's a twofold mandate most of the church has gotten the second part but we have ignored the first part you believe evangelists alone will be able to save the world no by what strategy did the news of the pandemic get to the whole world that there was a global lockdown global lockdown not lockdown that was national not lockdown that was continental that was a revelation that continents can be saved in one day if an announcement can go beyond barriers look beyond the tragedy and see the writings on the wall god is showing the possibilities that under a certain condition the same thing can happen across every nation under the influence of the pandemic it did not matter whether you were a Nigerian it didn't matter whether you had a company a similar thing happened in the days of Noah it didn't matter what else you were doing there was only one thing that was a subject matter during the pandemic your business did not matter during the pandemic your school did not matter during the pandemic nothing else mattered only the pandemic can we replace it with Jesus This is what I believe. This is more than being a preacher. This is the program of God. 
hallelujah please take it high for me whatever you want to do lord you can do through me whatever you want to say lord you can say through me whoever you want to lift lord you can lift through me for i'm yours jesus i'm yours forevermore i'm yours jesus i'm yours forevermore whatever you want to start lord you can start through me whatever you want to end lord you can end through me whoever you want to change lord you can change through me cause i'm yours jesus i'm yours forevermore i'm yours jesus i'm yours forevermore wherever you want to go lord you can go through me whoever you want to lift lord you can live through me this is the anthem of my life i stopped being a preacher many years ago many years ago because i found out that walking with god is greater than preaching and being an envoy of his presence a conduit of the possibilities of the kingdom was a nobler nobler pursuit listen ladies and gentlemen the spirit of god is speaking to us right now it took someone's diligence for you to be saved remember some of our parents some of them have gone to join the cloud of witnesses some were not so educated they didn't have the privilege to be so wealthy but there was a testament that they sought god and they lived for him in all of their lives short or long the most important thing is that they spent it revealing his glory we used to laugh at them for their strategies they were so determined to see people saved they will ring bells in cars they will stand on the streets they may not have had the enlightenment and the the, the, the the kingdom understanding to refine their strategies for efficiency but the sincerity of their heart was glaring before everyone they would do anything any scriptural strategy to see people receive Jesus here is now an educated generation an enlightened generation a generation that is so embarrassed about not falling their hands to let people see Jesus we rather receive the accolades for doing other things but I'm telling you with respect to the priority of God we need to return quickly we need to reorder our lives because the Bible says to walk circumspectly as wise and unwise you know for many of us growing up in our christian experience we used to have missionaries that would come and preach and they would say if you want to serve god in the mission field there will be an altar call remember a special altar call and you see people marching out as if they are headed for a funeral uh, they, they know the implication and they knew that they were not lying they would come to stand you would see people cry hug their loved ones and say that's it i'm in this forever there are seven crowns that will be given to men as revealed in the Bible hallelujah seven crowns that the Bible reveals there is the Matthias crown there is the Victor's crown 
there are many other crowns there are crowns that will come for the faithfulness when the bible talks about rewarding the works of men the works of men is based on a reference to what degree did it subscribe to the purposes of god not the abundance of the activity you will be surprised that if you laid hands on 20 people and only two people of those 20 you laid hands on only two of them motivated by the desire to reveal jesus it will be recorded in heaven that you laid hands on only two people the remaining 18 was the works of the flesh when the fire of god passes through your works it will burn away the remaining 18. so there are many spiritual activities today that we think will amount to much in the spirit we will find out there are people who your one year's um, worth of work when it is vetted based on the will of god it will be that you only work for one week in 2022 so let's be careful so we do not pride ourselves in religious activities to what degree did it reveal jesus to what degree did it end up establishing the lordship of christ in the hearts of men hallelujah is someone learning god desires that all men be saved and whoever participates in it there are rewards already the bible says in daniel chapter 12 and verse 3 daniel 12 and 3 please give it to us daniel chapter 12 and verse 3 and they that be wise the bible says shall shine as the brightness of the firmament and they that turn how many many to righteousness that they will shine even as the stars forevermore they that turn many to righteousness this is what took some of us from our lowly estates to where he has brought us today it's not based on mundane human parameters but by the simple desire of saying lord whatever it is that you want to do may i find the pleasure of being of service to you and he says are you serious about that let's go when god holds your hands and says let's go you are not only going to go forward you will truly go upward god does not move people forward you know how a plane moves a plane does not go forward alone it starts going forward but eventually it goes forward and upward that is the destiny of any believer who takes god seriously i don't know who i'm speaking to but the lord sent me to start this conference and to charge someone you have veered off sincerely from the program of god you may not be bad but right now the circumference of your pursuit is just you and flesh i want to make it i want to do well don't get me wrong it is god's desire for you to make it more than you can even imagine but there is a protocol and there is a strategy many believers today are driven by a make it mentality i just want to make it anyhow if i make it i will give god something that's not what he's looking for ladies and gentlemen it takes more than money to please god it takes more than giving land and all of those things this is not what we're talking about there is a realm of lovers where you don't seek the hand of god you seek the heart of god there are people who are interested in his hand god let me see what is on your hand today oh i hear that there are okay let me have it what do i need to do prayer i will pray so you will see correct spiritual activities but they are not producing the result they should bring because intrinsically is being corrupted the desire is not jesus i can fast for 100 days and yet the motivation from day one is already destroyed to see you high and lifted up you are shining in the light of your glory pour out your power and love as we sing holy 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 we'll see you high and lifted up you are shining in the light of your glory pour out your power and love as we sing holy 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 high and lifted up in my life 
you are shining in the light of your glory pour out your power and love as we sing holy 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 i want you to walk out of this church building tonight knowing that there are a number of souls today on earth who are at the mercy of your faithfulness no matter how effective any preacher is there are people who have been allocated who are at the mercy of your spiritual efficiency that if you refuse to rise up to this mandate there is somebody who may never know jesus it does not matter how many churches it does not matter how many conferences he said all that you have given me i have kept and none is lost jesus had to account for the souls given to him all that you have given me i have kept and none is lost except the son of perdition and i will have to explain why he was lost that the scripture might be fulfilled jesus had to account for judas i wonder how many of us are going to account for people when you stand before the lord and says i gave you influence i gave you access this entire family was at the mercy of your understanding the gospel what did you do may we not be ashamed when we stand before him in the name of jesus christ so the first mandate given to believers is to establish the lordship of jesus christ in the hearts of men we call this evangelism and this is through the gospel of salvation number two very quickly what is the second dimension to this mandate the second dimension to this mandate is to establish listen carefully the lordship of jesus across every strata of human activities to establish the lordship of jesus christ across every strata of human activities by compelling men to embrace his ideology and his value system please understand this the second mandate seeks to enthrone the lordship of christ across every strata of human activities by compelling men to embrace his ideologies the ideologies of christ and his value system when we now have to do with establishing the lordship of christ over systems and structures this happens primarily when we bring that system and that structure under the influence of the value system and the ideology of the kingdom so you see immediately that the gospel has two sides there is the message that saves personally there is the value system that transforms both of them must be captured in your communication of the gospel we call the message that saves evangelism we call the value system that transforms influence is someone learning now this is very very important as powerful as it is to establish the lordship of christ in the hearts of men it is wonderful but it should not stop there we must be able to introduce a superior value system across a territory the value system of the kingdom this is what will bring salvation over territories over systems and structures it is at this point now you begin to discuss things like the seven mountains it is at this point now you begin to discuss the subject and the concept of dominion this is really where dominion comes in now the ability to exert influence over systems and structures to the end that they subscribe to the lordship and the ideologies of the kingdom if you do not have this understanding your christian experience will be largely ineffective please listen carefully so 
we have a twofold mandate let me recap very quickly number one is to establish the lordship of the christ in the hearts of men number two is to establish the lordship of the christ across systems and structures across every strata of human activities if you're with me say amen listen territories and nations are not changed by physical structures territories and nations are held in captivity or delivered through the power of superior belief systems and ideologies you have to understand this if our communication of dominion and the life and the power of the kingdom does not translate to inculcating a new superior value system across people then we can be saved as individuals but the territory will not be saved an example of such was the man called lot lot was with abraham remember by the time abraham came to rescue him in sodom and gomorrah lot as a person was still a righteous man his family was still righteous but the territory he was about to lose everything because although he was saved personally his territory was in decadence to the point that abraham had to come you know and rescue him and then when all of that happened sodom and gomorrah was destroyed it is not enough to have that personal conviction for instance if you are a christian who loves the lord but you are living in a territory where there are kidnappers you can die as a result of that it is not a product of your personal conviction but you will still be a victim of a poor negative and demonic ideology within a territory and please hear me the key to bringing territories systems and structures to the lordship of christ is called dominion through influence now you understand why i took this route to talk about dominion that discussing the subject of dominion alone as a concept in isolation not connected to god's program will only be fueling the lost in men you see it is when dominion is viewed as an overall as as a subset of a larger body of truth that is when it now edifies you otherwise you just say dominion you should rule and reign amen you should never be poor amen you should rise to become a senior executive amen but the question is to what end what then happens when you rise what then happens when you are wealthy what then happens when you are competent all the forces of dominion that would we'll discuss tonight and for those who participate tomorrow morning all of them now will help you to see the necessity for dominion you will now appreciate the fact that poverty is evil not just because you are carnally minded for instance but because you have seen the role that it can play in stopping nations from coming under the lordship of christ so your attack on poverty does not become a lost driven attack it becomes that anything that interrupts the revelation of my king becomes my enemy your desire to be a billionaire now does you when you ask most believers why do you want to be rich they say are you joking you know i've suffered let me tell you my story sit down you don't know where i'm coming from forget all this one that i'm laughing you, you don't know what has we sympathize with where you are coming from but let me tell you the truth that cannot be the reason why you desire to prosper this is why believers pray pray and say god is it that you are blind you need people to i'm available and god says no not with this construct something must happen to your understanding for you to be trusted god loves everybody but he does not trust everybody matthew 25 he gave unto one five talent he gave unto one two he gave unto one one not based on his love for them based on their several abilities and the end of that story will show that he was just to have given it to them like that as much as we're all rejoicing and saying everybody is going to be rich everybody will prosper that is our desire but i hate to be the bearer of bad news it will not be like that there are people whose mindsets 
and ideologies and convictions are very antichrist so it becomes a risk for God to promote you and invest all kinds of spiritual resources upon that mindset this may be why God sent someone to this conference it is not just a demonic attack that we are where we are it is that there is something that is not yet pro kingdom in our understanding show us the ancient path will you lead us along eternal highway we want to follow the ways of jesus we want to enter your rest will you show us the ancient path will you lead us along eternal highway we want to follow the footsteps of jesus we want to enter your rest I know this because there are people in this season who will rise you will almost think they held a charm because once your heart is right God can elevate you in one month in a way that defies every law of economics and when people ask you and say by what means did you rise you tell them I am on assignment this is more than ambition I was lifted by the hand that has sent me so that i will find that visibility and walk the works of him that sent me there is timing to it so god will invest every resource that it takes anointing wealth influence god will shake nations and systems for your sake because he knows let me tell you the truth war betides a man that tries to fight one that god has approved that is on god's mission jonah was not a fake prophet but simply because he was fighting the program of god he ended in the belly of the fish he suffered no man to do them wrong see this is the correct basis for saying i am untouchable when you say i am untouchable you see why it does not work i am untouchable means that i am busy about the heart of god he said when i sent you lackest thou anything not when you went when i sent you it is on account of your mission that he suffered no man to do them wrong he reproved kings for their sake saying i have legitimized this one touch not my anointed hear me respectfully speaking let me tell you there are many things we claim without the balanced understanding of what triggers and activates them in our life for instance i shall not die don't stop there finish the scripture but leave and declare the works of the Lord that is the basis hallelujah is someone learning that means if because of the program of God and the enthroning of Christ over systems and structures God has mandated that in your lifetime what you will give to the kingdom is 50 billion and you are now worth 10 billion you are poor with respect to God's assignment it means you need to upgrade not motivated by lust but because you are aware of the standard and the magnitude of the responsibility are you seeing it now never pursue anything in the spirit until you find how it connects to kingdom come if not it will destroy you it will destroy you apostle pray for me i want to build a business congratulations why there's just something in my spirit too small a reason find another reason all my colleagues are now building it too small a reason find another reason someone told me that i look like an entrepreneur too small a reason find another reason well i've been made the leader of a bank called this one and we need to rise to the standard too small a reason find another reason for your glory i will do anything just to see you to behold you as my king now you are speaking God's language now you are speaking God's language 
now you are speaking God's language let me see the bank that will not rise let me see the company that will not rise let me see the power or the cause the yoke that will stand to fight God's program from a heart that is determined oh come on no the strength of evil is the corruption that is intrinsic within our heart that keeps legitimizing the power of Satan he says Satan cometh to me and does not find anything is someone learning now let me share a few things I hope God is blessing you let me share something maybe for the next few minutes and then we're going to pray and allow God to rest upon our hearts tonight something must come upon you this night in the name of Jesus Christ by this night's encounter may Saul be turned to Paul may Cephas be turned to Peter in the name of Jesus the son of the living God please come with me let's look at a, a few more thoughts and then we will pray So we have a mandate of promoting the value system of the kingdom across every strata and across every territory please look up what we called a developed nation what we call an advanced nation is simply a nation that has embraced value systems that are consistent with the way god thinks in many regards because you see the way the kingdom comes is as his will is being done are we together and his will is a revelation of his thoughts logos the thoughts of a man that seeks expression are we together so anywhere the mind of god is allowed to find expression that place will start molding itself to look like heaven please listen an organization can reject jesus they may reject the first part of this mandate i'm not interested in jesus i'm not interested in his lordship i'm an atheist or i'm whatever else but as far as administering wisdom within the cosmos is concerned they can work in keeping with value systems that are pro christ and pro kingdom you will find out that even though spiritually they are dead because they have refused christ because the system has obeyed the mindset and the value system of the kingdom the semblance of heaven will start coming to that system for instance let all things be done decently and in order any organization that just obeys that alone there is a measure of heaven you are pulled down by embracing that are we together now for instance a diligent hand shall be made fat and he that waters shall be watered you may not be a christian but now you are embracing the value system of the kingdom so a company will call it corporate social responsibility and they give on to certain people then they receive an award and they receive a grant by an international company they may not call it favor but whatever it is is a semblance of heaven anywhere you see dimensions of heaven manifesting it is because the mind of god is being honored there even if it is not called the mind of god so you can be saved and your life can be in total disarray your only hope is that you are with jesus when you are out of this world but as far as this life is concerned you can be living in hellfire physically do you know why because you have not embraced the value system of the kingdom that is responsible for transporting those spiritual realities to be at work in your life so jesus said when you pray say the kingdom the governing influence of the king that it finds expression in your space by his will his mind being done so when you ask a ceo or you ask someone who is leading the field in any area why are you successful take note of the things they start lead, they start mentioning diligence competence relationships accountability value and productivity all of these things have business names but the truth of the matter is that they are all proscriptual mindsets that is why that organization is the way it is transfer any nation you admire into the worst place in this country 
and transfer the people who are living there to that place give them one year they will replace their own environments you don't need to take the environment with you just take the people many of you may have heard me give an example of a ceo and respectfully speaking maybe a security man at the gate the man can be complaining and saying this ceo he has protocol all around him he's not doing anything he's just a rich man and he's collecting five million every month and i'm here suffering pulling the gate and i'm receiving 20 or fifty thousand. here is my proposal switch them don't change anything don't carry anything take the ceo to stay at the gate for two months and take our man to the office for two months you know what will happen the first thing that will happen is that man will most likely steal because he knows he will not stay there for a long time his mindset tells him that the environment is not a product of growth so you will not last he knows the first thing he will do is he will use an important document to wrap biscuits or balls because he does not know the value of documentation he would tear an important document maybe a contract and quickly pick something that is hot and eat and drink and you will see that the office will start looking like his mindset let me tell you what the ceo will do when he's outside the first thing he would do is to automate the gate because he cannot stand in that sun like that you see so he's turning the gates to become like that office sooner or later people will not need to pass through the gates to the office again because all their problems are solved at the gate he will now begin to manifest attributes dress well cautious and disciplined and say, you speak you are very composed and articulate are you you are the security man here so well uh, we decided to do something I, i'm the ceo I say, no wonder africa is the way it is nigeria there are yes there might be familiar spirits and all kinds of demons but let me tell you the truth these demons are happy because they are having a field day under a mindset that has become a stronghold this is what empowers their operations territorially speaking are we together now until as a people and as individuals we begin to import by superior intelligence the value system of the kingdom having put our spiritual lives right we now need to incorporate the value system of the kingdom and then you will find out that our lives begin to be transformed there for instance ask an average christian in nigeria is it the will of god for you to be blessed he will say yes so what are you doing about it are you joking i prayed i fasted i'm happy i just i don't know how it will happen i just know that god is going to change my life ask a ceo is your company going to grow he say yes say what are you doing about it you say well let me tell you this he will show you the indices he will show you everything at the end of that year one was shouting the other one was planning and you can see that at the end the difference is clear this has happened for centuries am i wasting your time we have a twofold mandate number one to enthrone Christ and his purposes in the hearts of men. Number two, by superior wisdom, embracing the value system of the kingdom that is captured in the word of God. The logos of God is more than a book of history. It's more than a book of literature. And that from a child, thou hast known the Holy Scripture, which is able to make you wise unto salvation. Is that true? It says, I commend you now, Acts 20, 32. I commend you to God and to the word of his grace, which is able to build you up and to give you an inheritance among them that are sanctified. May God help us to ascend to levels of influence, both in the spirit and in our world, so that we can direct men to Jesus and we can enthrone Christ and his purposes across every strata of human activities. Listen, if this becomes the framework of your Christian experience, there will never, never be a period in your life where you start crying and say, I'm backsliding. Your Christian experience becomes an adventure because it is, it is, it is, it is completely surrounded by purpose. There is always something to do every day. Hallelujah. 
praise the name of the Lord there is always something to do every day because your life and your influence now can bring glory to the name of the Lord this is very very powerful the ideology that transforms the ideology that transforms God desires for us to be able to exert dominion through influence dominion through influence mark chapter 1 please let's read verse 36 and 37 36 and 37 mark chapter 1 let me show you the power of influence because dominion is about exerting authority and influence the bible says when jesus was done healing and doing all of that he went to a solitary place to pray and 36 says when simon and they that were with him followed after him read verse 37 please this is the bible's definition of influence are you ready the bible says and when they had found him they said unto him all men one more time please all men all men you are attaining a position of kingdom influence when this verse becomes true in your life all men did the bible not say gentiles shall come to your light and even kings to the brightness of your rising all men there is a level of influence where some men will look for you there is a level of influence where your tribesmen will look for you there is a level of influence where only poor people will look for you there is a level of influence where only a group of people but that you attain a state and a stature in the spirit where all men this is what happened to jesus all men all men they will seek for you and please hear me there are forces that we engage i want to wrap up my teaching with this i may not have the time to teach but i just want to mention them there are forces that you must engage that brings you to this state where all men seek for you they will not just come to you just for who you are alone they will come to you because of certain things that are happening around your life it says gentiles shall come to your light not to you to your light then they are kings to the brightness of your rising are you ready now let me show you a few of them just right number one i call them pillars of influence pillars of influence are you ready number one growth and transformation you can never exert influence over a system and over people until you access and engage the force of growth growth and transformation i wish i had the time to deal with this growth and transformation genuine influence is a product of growth to grow means to increase by engaging certain forces hallelujah the only kind of growth that is natural is biological growth every kind of growth is outsourced intellectual growth spiritual growth are we together you want to grow spiritually and exert spiritual influence over a territory so that they will serve your god so that they will call upon the name of your god so that your value system of righteousness becomes their value system you must grow you must grow spiritually you must attain a status in the spirit that can be compelling who can look at you and say i want to follow your god i may not know his name but i know the one who represents him let me start by following you i was glad when they said unto me come let us go there is something about growth and transformation that compels systems and structures you will gravitate men you will gravitate systems structures resources to you at the instance of growth anything that you have in your hand that did not come by growth you are holding what will soon disappear growth growth apostle i'm trusting that the lord will grant me a great ministry like this present house what do i do grow an heir for as long as he's a child he differeth not from a slave even though he be lord of all are we together now yes god loves you too much you know what it means to lead a great church like this what do you know about warding of spiritual forces by the time people are coming with all the troubles that they have foundational and the rest what do you do 
do you understand people skills do you understand leadership enough to manage the diversity of people and cultures it's not just saying I, in the name of Jesus I receive this is where we make a fool of ourselves growth attracts influence growth attracts influence nobody wants to hang around someone who does not demonstrate potential for growth mothers when you give birth to a baby it will be unfair to tell the baby start talking now or start walking it's too early but after a year or two if that baby does not demonstrate signs of growth you go to the hospital and you say something is wrong by now i expect my child to speak by now i expect my child to walk please look at me there are some of you the reason why many cannot come to jesus through your life is there is no spiritual growth and transformation you've been born again before they came to church but now they are by far more spiritual than you using the indices of spiritual growth there is no transformation and conformity there is no outworking of the power of god in your life there is no um increase in spiritual illumination and the ultimate proof of growth love is not at work in your life there has to be growth spiritual growth intellectual growth is a buy the truth and sell it not when you submit yourself to knowledge and you grow and rise intellectually there are a group of people who would never come to church but by your growth they are compelled by the excellency the dexterity of your mental construct they will come to the house of God nobody will want to come and sit around a man of God especially a pastor and then know that he's sitting there is an intellectual risk to himself a spiritual risk to himself people love you but they love themselves too someone say growth i adjure you by the message of god that beginning from tonight contend for growth buy books buy teachings settle down camp with wisdom proverbs 18 1 through desire a man having separated himself the bible says he seeketh and intermeddleth with all wisdom for everyone that asketh receiveth he says I made up my mind that everything I need to learn as far as my efficiency in leadership ministry and every other endeavor of my life is concerned I will not pamper myself I will take advantage of the ministry of the Holy Spirit the resources of the Word of God and a diligent heart to grow when you grow God gives you the platform to find expression but he will not give you the platform to find expression when you are not prepared it is often said that when the student is truly ready the lecturer will come if the lecturer is not here is because the student is not serious for someone God is speaking to you you are where you are ministerially you are where you are in business your corporation is at that low level of influence simply because the organization is reflecting your own ideas you have refused to grow Jesus saw a fig tree and had an expectation on it for taking from the earth and then not bringing figs. He cursed it. He said, let no fruit come out. God is very unapologetic about dealing with stuntedness and lack of growth. When he met the man with one talent, he said, uh-huh, I expect more from you. He says, I know you are a hard man. You like to reap where you did not sow. So I did you a favor by burying the talent. Here is your talent. And he called him wicked and unprofitable servant. The grace to contend for growth. In the name of Jesus, I release upon you. Yeah. There are many of us who started doing well. But the truth is that we have refused to contend for growth. And I have a, a scripture for you. 1 Corinthians chapter 8 and verse 2. 1 Corinthians 8 and verse 2. Please give it to us. Let's hurry up. 1 Corinthians chapter 8 and verse 2. Read with me, please. Ready? One, two, read. That he knoweth anything. He knoweth nothing yet as he ought to know. This must become the anthem of your life what you know can stop you from knowing what you need to know make sure that your current level does not become the impedance for the next level make sure you challenge yourself 
act like you do not know anything submit yourself to learning open up yourself to the spirit lord i desire this for your glory but the unrefined version of me the nations will not place a demand on this unrefined version no cars do not queue up for that dark paste of smelly substance that is mined from the earth cars queue up for the one that is refined and they can queue up for days patiently nobody is willing to come and patronize the unrefined version of you obtain grace to work on yourself man of god obtain grace to be serious forget about invitations and platforms it is god that does that your job is to settle down and make up your mind that if god gives you any opportunity you will so represent his purposes with dignity and honor such that you will never go down again joseph while in the prison was preparing he knew according to the law of time and chance that one day he would find himself in the presence of his destiny helpers and that one moment he didn't need two one was enough growth and transformation Pillar number two, please write. Wisdom and excellence. Wisdom and excellence. This is the second pillar. Wisdom and excellence. You want to command influence over territories and over people. There must be a dimension of the wisdom and the excellence of the kingdom that is at work in you. Number three, very quickly. Are you ready for this? wealth and abundance yes sir wealth and abundance is the third pillar for influence i wish i was not the one who would have to say it but you will never be able to influence people when you are like them you see this is why poverty is very bad now we are this is this is this is the correct biblical approach to dealing with the issue of poverty Poverty is very bad. I personally hate poverty. Do you know why? Because of the role that it plays in interrupting God's program. If poverty were neutral, I would not have a problem with it. But poverty is not neutral. It can hold the hands of someone, a family. It can rob you of dignity and color. Are we together? Yes. Wealth and abundance. The Bible says, the rich rule it over the poor. Is that in your Bible? and the borrower is slave to the lender so what is another name for calling someone a slave a borrower the rich rule it over the poor can i tell you in the name of jesus christ when it's time to pray within the few minutes we have i want you to open up your heart and say father now i understand i reject poverty i've been tolerating it thinking that a simple life a simple life does not mean a mediocre life a simple life is just a life that has prioritized efficiency above the luggages that activities bring but by all means i want you to know and believe that if you embrace a life of poverty you're going to live a very miserable life even as a man of god even as a ministry you've heard me say the name of jesus is heavy it takes resources to lift it up for the nations to see wealth and abundance number four and then i'll stop here the supernatural signs and wonders signs and wonders signs and wonders signs and wonders Haliba shobrandi kibaka subia katash signs and wonders it matters that we see a display of signs and wonders in the house of God we're about to pray now there are many many people please give us Acts chapter 4 and verse 33 it's a scripture that has blessed me you want to exert influence kingdom influence over a territory it is not without the presence of signs and wonders let's read please ready one to read and with great power gave the apostles witness of the resurrection of the lord jesus christ and great grace was upon them all with great power with great power when jesus showed up he didn't have the time for discussions one of the synoptic accounts mark 
particularly archives the details of his supernatural exploits healing the sick the blind see and all of this when he was done and he shook the city he said all of you now come and learn and they came together and he began to teach them even if they did not believe him they could not doubt him for the work's sake please hear me especially for some of us who are called of God to be in the ministry of the gospel I submit to you with all humility and in the name of Jesus Christ a powerless preacher a powerless gospel that does not sustain within itself the power to validate the speakings of God through you will only repeat cycles of frustration in your life I can tell you this one genuine miracle can preach many sermons in the lives of people I know that people say it's not all about miracles and you are right but the role that the supernatural has to play as far as the revelation of Jesus is concerned and the ascendance of the saints to a point of influence nothing will replace it I can tell you this hallelujah I believe in the miraculous I believe in the supernatural for as long as I live that dimension of the kingdom will be captured and preserved at least let me speak for my generation we will never preach a powerless Jesus we will never bring cunningly devised fables I believe in the God that heals I believe in the God that lifts I believe that when God says you are blessed it should show do you believe that we must not get to a point where we become so used to the powerlessness of men of God that when they say God bless you you say amen while your mind is already out of the church because there is a track record of that word not working hallelujah that someone comes to church not just having a pain comes to church with a situation that he, he does not even know what to do and while the word is coming the power of God will mantle that individual before the service is over someone who was fighting you calls and said listen I want you to come and let's have a discussion just to let you know I'm relocating and going to another nation and let there be no strife take everything and he said what happened will you come to that church alone by next week no sir you will be too grateful to come alone you will start remembering everyone who is in trouble because you see men are compassionate they just have not found places of authentic solutions that's why they act as though they do not want to draw men i'm praying that in the name of jesus that this present house will step into another season a strange season of the supernatural and strange testimonies that someone will tell you i was just passing at the gate I've been buried for 18 years just passing at the gate of the church I don't know what the name of this church is but as I was passing the, the, the residue of the grace as a covenant that is upon the church and I went and I felt that something left me now I'm having triplets oh no let me tell you there are miracles called notable miracles notable miracles I believe in the supernatural and before this session is over i have about 10 minutes because i'm going to be speaking over your life this is more than a lecture there are things that need to shift there are things that need to change there are kings there are kingdoms there are mountains and there are thrones but only Yeshua will reign forever To his kingdom there'll be no end There are kings, there are kingdoms There are mountains and there are thrones But only Yeshua will reign forever to his kingdom there'll be no end there are names there are titles there are legends and tales of strength but only a shoe will reign forever to his kingdom there'll be no end please listen 
please hear me hear me I know what the power of God can do in the life of a man I know what the power of God can do you want to command kingdom influence may you get to a point where God can trust you to be an envoy of his power and you will see influence in proportions and levels that you cannot imagine let me tell you this do not downplay the fact that there are men in serious problems in this earth and you do not want to know what men can do when they have the slightest note of certainty that you can solve their problems they will bend over backwards they will inconvenience themselves with all our preaching of stopping people from going to harbor lists saying listen don't go to the devil people just listen to you and in their minds they wonder what is wrong with you as soon as you are done with that service as the condition presses further they quietly they will still respect you as touching whatever but they will quietly go and look for solution do not downplay the desperation of men why will someone sit down and mama is dying dying of a terminal disease and all efforts have been made do, the person does not want mama to die what do you think they would do if someone says listen there's something it's not exactly of the devil but it's also not of god it's somewhere in between there's no problem i can ask for forgiveness later just bring this thing i prayed and i cried unto god i said lord can you trust me to be one of your the conduits of communicating authentic spiritual power when we talk about spiritual power ladies and gentlemen it is more than falling down and standing up the capacity to veto the conditions of men it didn't matter what Saul was going through the moment he met Samuel that was it Samuel did not say donkey go back I'm telling you true confession I prayed a prayer and I said Lord let it please you to trust me that I would not just come and talk to people and preach and then they say amen and afterwards they return with the pain they return with the circles what then am I doing there did the Bible not call the gospel the power of God I know that you are here right now some of you left several things to be doing and to be here would it be fair to just wrap up and say okay go barring still go back barring one day God will heal you someone in the next few minutes the way God is going to shift things in your life please hear me you will marvel and wonder for some of you maybe you came here by invitation and you're probably used to preachers just talking and you say well all these nice people just talk and wrap up let's go can I tell you there are people who have a covenant with God I submit to you don't you make a mistake of believing that everybody is the same God of vengeance has won my battle for me. God of miracles has won my battle for me. I'm a winner man, a winner man, he's won my battle for me. God my lifter has won my battle for me. My rewarder has won my battle for me. I'm a winner man, a winner man, winner has won my battle for me. Listen, nobody is going to follow you until they see the signs following you. Did you hear what I said? Nobody is going to follow you until they see the signs following you. And the signs follow you, they don't go before. If you don't like that means everything that follows you is following you because there is something within you that is attracting it if failure is following you it is a sign if poverty is following you it is a sign 
if if all kinds of limitations are following you they are signs what you need to do is to change what is bringing the signs there are many of us who are desperately in need of spiritual empowerment and i understand that as a church you have been fasting and praying i was so touched when a people submit themselves to this spiritual exercise of fasting and prayer and pressing for the presence of God, it is because from the bowels of the spirit you are about to enter defining moments that there are seasons. And I'm saying this prophetically. I truly believe with all my heart that people are going to begin to rise from this church. Aside from the excellence in the marketplace, there are dimensions of spiritual power, capacity in the spirit. And this will have nothing to do with gender. Men and women all together, in the name of Jesus, the son of the living God, you will begin to find people with capacity in the spirit that before things happen, they will be given the eyes of the spirit. They will see and they will reveal. Now in one minute, wherever you are, I want you to pray two prayer points in one. Prayer point number one, Father, I will not go back the same tonight. I pray that your power and your grace will rest upon my life. Prayer point number two, that every challenge, everything that has defied the Lord in your life by the dominion power of Jesus Christ, it must live your life tonight. Please open your mouth and begin to pray. Are there people of prayer? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. John chapter 1 verse 6 and 7 it says, And there was a man sent from God. His name was John. Verse 7 says, The same came for a witness. To bear witness to the light that men through his witness might believe this is the mandate of every believer that through your witness whether in the in the area of business in the area of politics and governance tomorrow we'll have our time to discuss on some of those but i want to pray for you i believe in the power of prayer and i believe in the power of god i truly believe in the power of god to change lives the next one or two minutes that we have let your heart be opened because in a moment in a moment this is how fast god can change your life in a moment in a moment hallelujah in a moment let me pray for you it says behold i give you power authority over snakes and scorpions and over all the powers of the enemy and that in doing so nothing shall by any means hurt you please I'd like you to receive every prophetic word right now in the name of Jesus every door that has been closed over your life closed over your destiny I stand upon the grace that is in this house and in the name of Jesus who is the son of the living God I command those doors to be open now I command those doors to be open now number two let me speak restoration in the name of Jesus everything that has left you and brought your life down you have cried you have done everything you know to do i prophesy by the spirit of god according to the spirit of grace in ezekiel 37 i decree and declare dry bones come back to life now let there be restoration financial restoration marital restoration spiritual restoration 
in the name of Jesus Christ now let me pray for you I believe with all my heart that there are people here who have prayed you have been fasting and praying and God is leading you into a new spiritual experience there is an anointing that your destiny is looking for I want to release that power upon you and please I want you to help those who are under the anointing we're out of time and um, I, please may I request that you just let me five more minutes so that I'm able to do this because I know that God there are people who have come here I want to activate certain gifts and investments of the spirit he said I desire to come to you once and again but Satan hindered us but if he has come then it is to impart upon you some spiritual gift hallelujah we are going to make this very fast please whether you are an usher or not if anybody is under the anointing I want you to bring them out let me just speak over their lives I want to pray for you in the name of Jesus Christ the Lord is imparting a prophetic grace there are some of you you see this prophetic thing that has been abused please bring them out I stretch my hands right now and I decree and declare the grace to see and the grace to hear please bring them out in the name of Jesus Christ I stretch my hands right now help this woman at the count of three may that anointing rest upon you one two three take that grace now take that grace now take that grace now I activate that dimension this present house I release this grace a new season of the prophetic dreams and visions as he prophesied to Joel I decree and I declare may that be the case for you now may that be the case for you now the spirit of revelation especially for those of you who have the call of God upon your life I stretch my hands upon you the spiritual acumen the ability to understand scripture man take receive that grace now receive that grace now an impartation of that grace now please pay attention be sensitive I want to pray and release speed I hope you believe in that grace please help those who will start running now father upon this present house i stand by the apostolic and the prophetic every spirit of delay that has tied lives families businesses by the anointing of the spirit i release speed take that grace now i release speed 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 to your life 10 years in one year by the power of the holy ghost speed in your spiritual adventure every crawling business i prophesy speed every corporation here i prophesy speed in the name of jesus christ now hear me every demonic activity around your life help them now I decree and declare the power of God is about to separate you every demonic activity in the name of Jesus at the count of three I want you to shout the name Jesus I declare your liberty one two three be free now be free now every yoke tying your life down I stand upon the grace that is in this house and I advocate your liberty in the name of Jesus the Christ of God hallelujah praise the Lord oh dear who who owns like um i don't know if it's um a beauty some beauty outfit or so um maybe not not a spa some i know that is something that has to do with beauty maybe 
a, an outfit that that takes care of maybe hair and all of these things There's, i'm seeing god visiting someone maybe a saloon or some kind of beauty things in the name of jesus i don't know where you are but i stretch my hands let the power of god rest upon that person right now in the name of jesus christ i'm seeing the word uba uba who works there uba bank i believe that that's that's a bank because god is bringing increase for someone i saw the word uba whether you are here or online we may not have the time i requested for five minutes in the name of jesus who is the son of the living god wherever you are the increase that god is bringing in this season we declare that every power fighting you must let you go now in the name of jesus christ i'm hearing the cry of two babies two like twins in the name of jesus i don't know who that person is but god who has revealed it i prophesied by the power that is in the name of jesus according to the time of life by this time next year i decree not one child i had two i i release it upon you twins by the spirit of god please help them twins by the spirit of god in the name of jesus is there someone here whose dad is a police officer your father works with the nigerian police force is there someone like that in the name of jesus i don't know where you are but we avert death during operation like because i'm seeing a man who is going out on operation in the name wherever you are this I'm, I'm so sorry we're just rushing because of time in the name of jesus i decree and declare nobody connected to this vision would die everything in your life that has refused to grow whether it's your business whether it's your endeavor i place an anointing upon it right now and i declare may it grow in leaps and bounds may it grow in leaps and bounds may it grow in leaps and bounds now please hear me the favor of god is a very powerful mystery that is responsible for the rising of men in this kingdom the presence of favor in a man's life is tested by three biblical indices number one unusual kindness from men to you number two unusual access that you have with men number three unusual acceptance these are the three biblical indices that measure the presence of favor let me repeat unusual kindness number two unusual access number three unusual acceptance so that next time you are praying for favor don't just pray arbitrarily you know the dimensions of what you are crying for unusual kindness unusual access unusual acceptance i want to release this tripartite grace of favor upon you because i i submit to you by god that if that grace is not upon you your life will not be able to command the victory that will compel many to jesus i decree and declare may this mantle of favor right now wherever you are whether you are the back the front i decree and declare let it rest upon you now let it rest upon you now hallelujah praise the lord is there a name like morenike morenike or nike morenike please don't make sure you don't tell lies i have just morenike who is that is there someone with that name i just had that name morenike is it male or female which one now come quickly let me just pray you too your name father in the name of jesus christ i want to pray the lord is opening a door that no man no man according to revelations 3 and verse 8 i said before you an open door i stretch my hands and i decree and declare the lord mention your name 
therefore i declare everything sitting on your head that will not allow you to rise i declare be delivered now in the name of jesus christ by the power of the holy spirit i release you 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 i'm seeing this man do i'm seeing you do a work with someone in uk like a work a collaboration this is what i'm seeing this is part of your project for next year this is what god is revealing to me i'm seeing him do a program like i'm seeing what i'm seeing in my vision is like a a worship experience but this is not in nigeria this is uk this is what god is is in the name of jesus christ I pray for you in addition to all that God has done in your worship ministry we measure a thousand cubits for you may God shift you higher in the spirit in the mighty name of Jesus now for all of you who are in front here I declare that the fire of God that has come upon you and brought you liberty may that fire perfect its work in your life in the name of Jesus Christ may that fire perfect its work in your life one of you god is raising you to be a mighty man of god i pray that that grace the dealings that you have with god may you continue may you continue in the name of jesus until you are built to become a man of stature and power in the spirit every challenge in your life that you came here with i agree with you between now and the end of november in the name of jesus who is the son of the living god may that challenge return to your testimony in the name of jesus christ you are here right now in this place and you are saying apostle i've heard what you have said but sincerely i cannot even talk about dominion nor kingdom authority because i have not even opened up my heart to receive jesus or you are here you are saying apostle truly i remember making it right with jesus but as it is right now i have given into all kinds of compromises i need to make it right there's one person here there's someone here who must make it right with jesus on this night there's no point playing games with your destiny and there's no point waiting for someone to be the first i'm going to count one to five whichever space i know that there are people scattered under the anointing but right in front of me here i'm going to count one to five i want you to leave your seat and run and come and stand here there's nothing to be ashamed of at the count of five you should be here so that we'll wrap up one run to jesus without you I can do nothing without you there's no life to me so I need you in my life today please come come don't be ashamed you must make it right with jesus win that war of destiny once and for all true dominion kingdom authority starts by acknowledging the lordship of jesus apostle you don't know what i've done you don't know how i've lived my life don't worry he's able to give you a new beginning he says as many who will come to him he will in no wise cast away let tonight be your night let it be the beginning of a genuine experience with jesus some of you are crying don't be ashamed of your tears may i please request you would notice officials are giving you a card please receive it you'll be required to fill it legibly but for the moment just just receive it and let me have your attention i want you to know that jesus loves you and i want you to know that the matter of jesus and salvation is beyond church is beyond a man of god is beyond a conference it must be true you must make up your mind that you want to make it right with jesus and let me tell you my beloved people there is nothing to be ashamed of there is nothing to be ashamed of he's able to give you a new beginning he says that whosoever believes in him would not perish 
but have everlasting life may i please request that you lift your right hand as a sign of total surrender to jesus say this after me loud and clear say lord jesus, lord jesus. Tonight, tonight i declare that i love you i declare that i believe that you are the son of god i believe that you died for me i believe that you rose again for my justification right now i receive you into my heart as my savior as my lord and as my king i declare that the power of sin satan hell and the grave is broken over my life from tonight and forever i am a child of god i go from glory to glory and grace to grace in jesus name keep your hands lifted let me pray for you this life that you have is the life of god in you this life that you have is the life of god zoe 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 by the integrity of the word of god and upon your confession I declare you bona fide recipients of the life of God and I declare that from tonight you walk in righteousness and true holiness you go forward ever and backward never the power of sin Satan hell and the grave is broken over your life in Jesus name I pray okay here's what I want you to do all of you please may I request that you move to my right which will be your left there are counselors waving their hands you can see them they will have a word with you very quickly let's honor them as they go please give them a big God bless you hallelujah let's give them a big God bless you hallelujah thank you very much for granting me this opportunity um, dr. Tony Rappo thank you so much pastor Jude thank you for allowing me to be a blessing tonight i pray in the name of jesus that tonight and all the sessions we still have god himself will impact us i do not know if everybody will be in the subsequent sessions but in the name of jesus i pray that the next time we see you would be 10 times greater than this in jesus name we pray hello scriptures exhort us from the book of proverbs it says my son attend to my sins incline thy ears to my words let them not depart from thy eyes and keep them in the midst of thee as you have listened to this message we believe that you are going to reap the blessings thereof if you attend to these words as well that you will keep these words in the midst of your heart that no matter the circumstance your eyes are going to be fixed on these words and as you have been blessed we will tell you to share this message be an evangelist by sharing to others to be blessed and then subscribe to this channel for us because we have loads of videos we have loads of content that is going to make you blessed that is going to set you on course that is going to set you ablaze and don't forget to like for us. Thank you.